I think, so this is the shortest period of time I've spent in any one location in Ukraine, but it's absolutely been the best, you know. Um, in my opinion, the best guys in Ukraine, right, the ones with the most heart, the ones with the strongest ethical code, the, the guys that are willing to sacrifice everything, the guys that are sacrificing everything, um, they're all here, you know, maybe not here specifically, but on the line at the other stabilization points, you know, they're at the hospital a little bit of ways, right? Like these are the guys that have, you know, taken their family out if they could. And then they all came back. They were out of the country and they made the decision to come back and, and do whatever it needed. Um, I've got nothing for, you know, nothing but respect for these guys. They made me want to stay. I could have left a few weeks ago, but you called and you gave me the option to come down here and I'm glad I took it. It's been a privilege to, to be trusted enough to, to actually care and give medical treatment to, to their soldiers. That's not something you give up lightly. You don't let foreigners generally treat your own guys. Um, so the, the trust that they put in me was huge. I don't take that lightly. But yeah, I, I've got nothing but respect for these guys. The, these, these are the guys that make me have hope that Ukraine is is in good hands, right? All these guys down here, the soldiers on the line, the ones fighting, um, you know, they made me they made me want to stick around, and they made me want to sacrifice more. They made me want to, you know, actually get far more involved than I intended to when I got here. And it's it's quite it's quite heartbreaking, right? That I got the news that I did that. As happy as I am, right? But things are changing in my life. Um, that I basically have no choice but to step away from Ukraine and go back home and, and take care of those things. Um, you know, how do you how do you choose to walk away from from the best kind of people to work with? You know, in, in a lot of ways, it's similar to when I left the Marine Corps. No, those are the best kind of guys. You deployed with them, you trained with them, you, you knew everything about them. And it's only been a couple weeks here, but you already start to develop those attachments and those relationships with these guys. Um, so it's sad. It's, it's sad that I'm, I'm, I'm leaving all this behind and go back to, I guess, my own reality, go back to America. Um, but it is what it is, right? That's life. Things happen for a season. Um, but there's, again, nothing but respect for these guys. Everything that they're doing, everything that you're helping them with too, you know, I think you can't overlook that. I think they're as blown away by what you've done as you are. <laughs> you <know? laughs> I still remember, you know, Igor's reaction. You were like, here's a generator. And he's like, probably thought you were going to die. But no, it's good. It's good. It's, you know, you run the options through your heads of how can I stay? How can I still help? Um, but that's life, right? We all have to we all have to make decisions and live with them. And, and I'll live with mine just like everybody else. I don't know what else there's to say. You've done great. Yeah, yeah sure. You you can train people with your skills. I I, I don't have them and I don't have the time because the war is on. Well, that's why we do what we do, right? Like, I want those skills. I desperately want well, those skills. We, that's why we train them. But it was the same thing when I was leaving, right? People are like, why are you why are you going to Ukraine and risking your life and doing this and that? And it's like, well, because I can, right? Like, I, I spent nine years in the infantry. I, I've spent, you know, several years now as a paramedic. I work in, in a, a pretty rough city. Okay, so I see these wounds. I see how to treat these things. Why wouldn't, you know? Why wouldn't I go and, and assist people who are being you and I have both witnessed some of the war crimes that are going on <laughs> why wouldn't we get involved and, and try to throw ourselves into that gap and stop it um, I wanted to do the same thing and, and like they, they asked me these questions and I said I would have done it in South Sudan if I could you know that's still the goal right is the goal is still to do humanitarian aid in Africa but now I have the skills right now I'm a paramedic now I've been in the infantry for years like now I can do all those things before, I would have just gotten in the way. Here, I can bring something to the table, right? Obviously, with your <laughs> nigh cocaine fueled like energy levels. I don't right? do cocaine. He doesn't do cocaine. It's all it's all genetic for you, apparently, right? Like your your energy levels 
have allowed you to do more than half of these NGOs and you're one man. You know, most of the NGOs that came here did it for clout or they did it for whatever reason and they were totally ineffective, right? So the guys here now, you know, it, it's, why wouldn't you throw yourself in harm's way to protect people who need help? I don't know, man. I just, right, I know for me, for me, this kind of work is, is not over for me. Maybe it is right here in this immediate moment, right? Because I have to go home and I have to take care of these things. And I'm happy to, right? But, so um, am I. but it's, yeah, this isn't, this isn't necessarily there. Maybe not even Ukraine totally, but it's, why wouldn't you help? I don't know. I, it's, and I especially, right, like, this isn't my frustration with the bureaucracy in Kiev and west of Kiev and the corruption and and people stealing things from their own brothers and, and you know like when we found out that they took the the IFACs that were supposed to go to the front line and they went south of Lviv I almost packed my bags and left the country I, w I was so fed up with that kind of corruption you know I would do I was done mentally um, <clears throat> But, you know, we stuck it out. We trained some more people. We met really good guys, dudes who, who gave up their, their money, their livelihoods, right? They, some of them didn't even get their families out of the country. And they went south to go fight, you know, down in, in, in Mikhailiv near Mariupol and all of that. And, you know, it, it's, it's so I still think about it, right? I, I've been messaging them as, I, as I've been getting ready to leave the country, checking in on them, seeing what else they need. They still ask me for... You know, hey, if I have this kind of a specific situation or what are what are things to keep in mind there, right? Like that's gonna continue even when I'm out of the country. I'll still give as, as much advice as I as I realistically can. But yeah, man, these dudes here are, are what kept me in country. That's that's for sure. That's for sure. It's you know, I don't I don't think we can explain the decision that I had made to do maybe three days ago. But, you know, obviously that's not gonna happen now, but that's how, that's how down I was for the cause, right? Like, you know, going, walking into a war zone is not, you don't do it for ego or you shouldn't do it for ego. You know, it's, it's gotta, it's gotta, there's gotta be some pure intentions there. You're just gonna walk into trouble. So I don't know, man, it's, there's a lot of processing that's gonna go on over the next, the next few months when I get home, right? But, yeah, it's good work out here, man. I'm glad to have been a part of it. Glad to have you. Yeah. Whatever, man. Get Whatever. <laughs> Screw you, man. <laughs> Getting emotional. It's, I'm Cut camera it's, now. Yeah, <sighs> I don't know if it's emotional, but it's... I better cut this.